an example of when you may encounter a logarithmic function inside a business application. Now I'll say that these aren't as common as seeing the polynomials in business applications, but the thing about the logarithmic function is that it, it grows very slowly. Okay, so typically your log function looks something like this, where it grows higher and higher, but it does so at a very slow rate. Now if it turns out that you have some data on your total cost, and the dots seem to line up in that sort of pattern, then maybe describing them using a logarithmic function is your best option at the time. Um, if that's the case, then you might show, end up with the function that we see here on the board. Okay, So let's pretend that we have um, the total cost in dollars to produce X items, and that's given to us as a fixed cost of $1,200, and then plus 180 times the natural log of 3X plus 1. The question I'd like to answer is, what is the marginal cost when producing 100 items? Now, as we've already discussed, the marginal cost is very well approximated by the first derivative of the total cost function. And so we're going to answer this question right here by computing the first derivative of C evaluated at x equals 100. Okay, the first step will be writing down what is the functional form of the first derivative of C. And then the second step will be to plug in the number 100 and get an actual value. And then we can discuss what the units would be on that value. Alright, so hopefully you've already watched the video that describes the derivative of logs. Because now we need to take the derivative of this function inside an application. First step, what's the derivative of the number 1200? Just zero. As usual, the derivative of all numbers is zero. And what's the derivative of this term right here? Well, the 180 can just carry right through, so due to the constant multiple rule, I'll just put the 180 right there. And really, it just boils down to what is the derivative of the log of 3x plus 1. Okay? So if you've seen the pre previous video, then you think, oh, this one's not so bad, right? Um, so you're just going to do 1 over the inside function, 3x plus 1 like that. And then what am I forgetting? To multiply by the derivative of that inside function. That's right, don't forget to multiply by that 3. And so the number that we get is going to be 540 divided by 3x plus 1. Okay, so I've got a lot of space here. Let's talk about the units a little bit. What are the units going to be on the C prime here? Well, just like every other derivative, the units are going to be the y unit divided by the x unit. So it looks like the y unit is in dollars, and the x unit is in number of items. And so this is going to be in dollars per number of items. All right, great. So I guess we didn't really need that much space. For step number two, we just have to plug and chug with the number x equals 100. So to answer the question, what is the marginal cost um, at a production level of 100 items, we're just going to do 540 divided by 3 times 100 plus 1. And so that's going to be 540 divided by 301. And approximately to two decimal places, I've got the number $1.79 per item. Okay. So now let's spend a little extra time in this application problem to interpret the value that we got of 1.79. $1.79 per item, what does this actually mean? Do you know what it means? I would wonder if you do, so why don't you try to test yourself right now and write down a sentence right here that interprets that value, okay? So write a sentence that interprets that value, and I want you to just do this free form um, to see how that compares to what I'm going to write down right now. Write a sentence that interprets this. Go ahead, try it by yourself. Okay, so now I'll try to, let's see, um, the derivative. So that means that if I go up by 1 in the x, then my y is going to change by that much. So if I make one more item. So I go from making 100 items to making 101 items. My y value, which is my total cost, my total cost will go up because it's a positive value by the amount $1.79. Did you have something written like that? 
maybe you did. Or there's another way to say that. Um, so this is one correct way to interpret that. You could also say that, to be a little bit shorter, it costs a buck seventy-nine to make one more item. But which next item is it? Well, right now I'm making a hundred and I'm gonna make one more. So it costs me a dollar seventy-nine to make the one hundred and first item. Okay? So I'm not saying that it's only gonna cost me a dollar seventy-nine to make all hundred items or all hundred and one items. I'm saying just for that one extra item, just to make that one more item, it's gonna cost me a dollar seventy-nine to make that hundred and first item. Okay, so that's the interpretation of um, marginal costs. Now, that's the only example that I have here because logarithmic forms are not too common inside of your business applications. Um, so I'll spend a little extra time in this video to just review some terminology, okay? Because you're going to see all these different terms um, used interchangeably all the different times in this class. We have that the marginal cost is $1.79 per item at x is equal 100 items, and we already talked about what that means. I just want to compare this with the total cost. So what if I asked you, what is the total cost at x equals 100 items? And let's compare that as well as what is the average cost at x equals 100 items. Now, maybe you're inside a class on business calculus with me right now, and if you have a midterm or a final exam coming up, you may worry that any and all of these questions are fair game on the exam. So I want to make sure that you review and know um, how to answer each one of these questions. We've already answered marginal costs, but go ahead and just for a little sake of review, try to answer these. What is the total cost at x equals 100 items? What is the average cost at x equals 100 items? Okay, so I hope you tried to review those to make sure that you know, um, you've continued to know the answer. This answer is going to be by just plugging in x equals 100 to the original cost function, the original total cost function. And if you plug in x equals 100 there, you're going to get $2,227.28. And if you want to write a sentence to interpret this, the sentence would say, this is how much it cost me to make my first 100 items in total. To make all 100 items is costing me $2,227.28. Right. What about average cost? This is the one that's a little tricky, and sometimes people will mistake marginal cost for average cost. Okay? So marginal cost, we evaluated the derivative here. Do you remember how to calculate the average cost? Oftentimes we refer to the average cost as c bar of x. Do you remember what the equation for that was and the concepts behind it? The average cost is, on average, how much is it costing me per unit um, when I'm making so many units. And so what I do for that is I take my total cost and I divide it by how many units I'm making. Okay? So let me do that. Actually, I have C of 100 right there. So the average cost, C bar at 100, is going to be C of 100 divided by how many I'm making at a time, which is 100 items. And so I'm just going to divide this number by 100 right here. So I'm going to get 22.27 dollars per item. Okay? So it says, on average, my average cost is that it's costing me $22.27 per item. And notice the units on this in dollars per item. That's the same as the units of the marginal cost in dollars per item, but why is this number so much lower? What do these two things have in common and what's the difference between marginal cost and average cost? That's a very important question if you're working in business and you happen to see those phrases. You can see that this is a huge difference in numbers, like over ten times more. So I should really know what each one of these things means. Okay, so as we discussed, the marginal cost is if I'm already making a hundred items, how much would it cost me right now just to make one more item come off the line? Only a buck seventy-nine, right? But the average cost takes the total cost and it divides it by how many items. So right now if I'm making 100 items and that's costing me over $2,200, keep in mind that for this problem I had a fixed cost of $1,200. 
A lot of this money right here is just in the fixed cost, $1,200 of my rent or, you know, the equipment rental or whatever. And so really the average cost per item for each of those items is it's costing me $22.27 per item right there. The difference between this number and that number is this includes the fixed cost. Okay, so you have to keep in mind that these items are costing you a lot of money, but the bulk of that cost might actually just be in the fixed cost of you um, having to rent the building or equipment or whatnot. But when you're thinking about marginal costs, you're not including the fixed cost. So this conceptually here does not include the fixed cost because what this question answers right here is if I'm already made 100 items and I've paid whatever that costs to make, how much, after I've already paid my rent and I'm building and all that, how much would it cost me just in variable materials, let's say, to put one more item out? So that's why this one is so much cheaper. It doesn't include the fixed cost, but the average cost here does include the fixed cost. They're often confused because they have the same units, but keep in mind the concepts behind each.